Arns. Welcome everyone to another Observability Clinic. We have another app spotlight, Business Flow app update December 2023. It's because we had the first version of it back in April, also with Klaus. Klaus, servus. Servus, Andy. Hey, really cool that you guys are really producing new updates to these apps, especially around business observability. I know it's a big topic. We've been discussing this many years. We've been the two of us especially been in this field for a long, long time. We've always done, you know, performance monitoring, APM, but we've grown up quite a bit and we've kind of moved into the business observability area. I don't need to tell you because obviously you're driving this. But Klaus, tell us what excites you about the business flow app and why do people install? Why do you need to install it? So why you need to install it? Because I always say like, hey, all our IT systems are having a business purpose. Mm -hmm. guess this is the reason why they are running. If not, then you have found a candidate to save your costs, but uh, that's not the topic here. But uh, what has been a, a problem for businesses over the years is really like, I have my IT infrastructure and because of the very liquid uh, design of today's architectures, it became more and more intransparent what is the business purpose? What is the business process uh, that is actually the IT serving here? Mm -hmm. And this is hindering the communication, the collaboration between uh, line of business and IT. Mm -hmm. And I produced it or I discussed it with so many people uh, and they always said like, hey, it's now so helpful because I have a very transparent conversation. I need more infrastructure over here because it's this critical process that is serving Black Friday, three times the capacity of, of, of people hitting. This is where like very, very simple communication is, is, is possible. Mm -hmm. So this is where uh, the BizFlow app comes in here. It really allows you over time, look at uh, business KPIs plus dive into uh, the business processes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, everything, like any other app, it can be installed from the hub. Um, and the prerequisites, what are the prerequisites for the app? Uh, the prerequisite is a DDU license mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Grail ingest retain and query uh, pricing being part of it. That's it. That's it. Cool. So with some business events, obviously, with as a business, there's a lot of material out there around business events. We've done clinics and there's mm -hmm. more clinics coming up. But uh, Klaus, I always know that you like to demo things live. Sure. You want to demo? Let's uh, dive into uh, our product. And first of all, how do I get the app? Uh, I go to Hub. And on the Hub, it's listed here as uh, one of the what's new apps. Should you not find it, uh, if you just uh, search for business flow, you will see, you will get it. Uh, I have already installed it. Uh, you can, uh, that's why I have here my open button. Mm -hmm. In all other cases, you will be seeing here an install button. Mm -hmm. Once you install the app, uh, you have a demo configuration that you can work with. Mm -hmm. But I have here for us uh, today already uh, produced an, a, a specific new flow. You can just uh, dive into, I'll click on it. I'll see that uh, this uh, Acme demo is uh, having troubles because the revenue is dropping here and the conversion is going down. Um, and if I see down here, I already see a pretty decent long uh, process. And I see I'm having trouble here on this particular uh, place where I have a significant number of uh, people actually dropping out. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty now of Dynatrix. I can just uh, go in here and say, like, okay, on these drops, I get here these IDs, may they be order IDs or whatever you have defined, and tying things together. And I just click on it and get additional insights about this particular uh, order. I see like what happened along the way, mm -hmm. but I also have here my customer ID, so I can go back uh, in my customer uh, center and, and work on it. But I also see what was the business impact of this individual mm -hmm. uh, journey here. 
where we had a decent amount of uh, dollars uh, being uh, parked uh, in, the, in, in this order. They were using payment provider Klarna, mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately, uh, as Klarna takes a little bit of time till uh, you get the credit worthiness check done, it tells you at the end you have insufficient funds and that's why uh, we basically have here an exception at this step. Mm -hmm. So Klaus, if you can do me a favor and scroll to the left, what you are showing me here is a complete end-to-end -end business process of somebody that was putting an item to the cart, went to the checkout, selected the payment, verified the card, and then the payment failed. And this is the five-step process. Obviously, it didn't go all the way down to order confirmed because that would be the last step in your process. But this is for an individual one. Now, if you close this, you have modeled basically on the left side, the whole end-to-end -end process and Dynatrace is not only observing a single one, but it's observing every single person that is trying to go through that process. And for every single step, it shows me how many have succeeded, how long did it take, and then where did people drop out? Uh, In-flights, what does in-flight mean? Uh, In-flight means uh, between this and this step. Sometimes okay. it can take an hour for the step that the process to complete. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have there basically uh, an order mm -hmm. in this hour time frame, it's not uh, considered being drop, but yeah. being in flight. Perfect. And then if you scroll all the way up again, I think you also have then these nice high level uh, KPIs, obviously. Yeah. Right. Oh. Uh, you can also uh, view these KPIs over time. Mm -hmm. How are you developing from a revenue conversion perspective? Am I going the right route, yes or no. no. Key for you uh, is like we spoke about here in order process. Uh, our customers have implemented this for food delivery, implemented it for hardware, iPhone replacements, mm -hmm. have implemented it for fund managers placing their orders for the specific funds to figure out if these order makes it, make it through the iPhone being not only ordered on, on the website, but actually delivered to the customer with warehouse system in between. Mm -hmm. Those kind of uh, processes are possible. Mm -hmm. You can also think about other, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, ticketing systems. If somebody is like, is, is opening up a self-service ticket, how long does it take until this ticket is fulfilled? Uh, insurance um, uh, claims, right? I mean, these are all processes, business, any, any type of business process. Yeah can be modeled and monitored with this. It's really it's really awesome. And the um, the underlying uh, data set in Dynasty is what we call the business event. Exactly. Yeah. Business events, because we uh, needed to bring to our observability solution the accuracy that is needed for such exercises. And that's why we have business events. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Folks, we will also link to some of the other clinics on business events because you already did uh, some education around uh, what's the data source of a business event? Where can it be, can be extracted from a log? It can be extracted uh, from uh, your your UI. Your... That like in this case, an order, the payment, uh, and you want Dynatrace to tell you how many people are walking through these processes how many are failing, how many have challenges, what are the business KPIs, then go to the hub, install the business flow app, configure the flow. You can also play around with the demo flow, which is nice. And then uh, use Dynatrace to better guide you on how well connected your IT and business are. Exactly. Perfect. Klaus, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back with a uh, more detailed, deep dive session as well. So check it out. Bye-bye.